Jane, what are the top five misconceptions about CETA? Ah, top five. Well, there's so many. Um, I think the biggest one was the fact that uh, Canada would be exporting some hormone-treated uh, beef to Europe and also some Java water chicken, which is a complete myth, so that's not going to be the case. I would say the second one would be that there was a big comparison between, um, actually there was no comparison made between CETA and TTIP, so the, the U.S. Uh, bilateral agreement that's also in negotiation or was in negotiation until recently. Um, I think people, the press made you know one big pile, these two trade agreements, whereas they're, they're quite different because the cultures in Canada and U.S. are different and the legal systems are different. The fact that um, one, um, one other myth would be that uh, the SMEs, um, the, the, the agreement was painted as being very detrimental to SMEs, whereas it's, it's certainly very beneficial to SMEs. The tribunal, so the protection of investors, um, we painted this whole section of investor protection as being to the, um, to the detriment of states, that, so that multinationals would be able to sue the states, which is a possibility, but it's very controlled, so the risk is very limited. And I would think that the fifth biggest one, um, biggest misconception, was the, the fact that um, it, was, it was said that the whole negotiations were not done in transparency, everything was done secretly, I think. There was a part of it that was out of the public eye, but to say that it was a secret negotiation, that's not true because the mandates were given to negotiators and uh, different regions and different uh, members of the government were included in, in talks and negotiation. The agreement was published two years ago, so people had access to it. It was published, I think, six months ago in 23 languages. So um, to say that it was in total secrecy and a lack of transparency, I think that was over-exaggerated. For what sections, innovations and legalities CETA is called a golden standard of trade agreements? Well, CETA goes beyond all of the other bilateral trade agreements out there on many aspects. First of all, 99% of the tariffs are going to be immediately eliminated. Um, mobility of labor, mobility of, for, for employment. Um, there's a lot of uh, non-trade barriers that are going to be uh, removed, so a lot of cooperation is going to be put in place, recognition of, um, of uh, procedures and certificates and things like that, IP protection, so uh, intellectual property rights protection, uh, opening up of services, um, also public procurement, that's a new thing that Canada for the first time is opening up public procurement. Also investor protection, so the whole system of investor protection, the whole tribunal that's been put in place, this is the first time ever that this has been done. So we have 140 other um, bilateral trade agreements that include a, a different type of mechanism of um, investor protection. This one goes way beyond anything that's been done. So on, on quite a number of aspects, it goes way above and beyond anything that exists today. What is the status of tribunal controversy right now? Ah, the tribunal controversy. Well, um, it was based on the fact that um, in about 140 bilateral trade agreements before, the, the, the whole process of the tribunal actually was an arbitration court. It's pretty much the same everywhere. And that was based on the fact, on the, on the mechanism, that it was an ad hoc type of arbitration tribunal where the arbitrators were appointed and paid by the parties. So that led to a lot of claims that there was um, conflict of interest uh, amongst others. So we wanted to make this system now um, much more transparent and very um, controlled, if you want, under supervision to, to avoid these types of conflicts of interest. So it's a permanent court now where there are going to be 15 judges. Five will be appointed by Europe, five will be appointed by Canada, and five will be appointed from um, third countries. So there will be 15 uh, judges. And the judges uh, will also be under the supervision of the um, International Court of Justice. So there's a whole chapter on ethical behavior also, a code of conduct. And one of the issues was that this code of conduct, although the, the whole principle of having the code of conduct was put into the agreement, um, the details of the code of conduct were not were not sufficiently uh, stipulated in the agreement. So we still need to do that. Um, but for the rest, uh, yes, I think it, it's very clear now that it has gone way beyond any type of investor uh, dispute tribunal. In some economy yeah. sectors, Canada and the EU have very long and extensive relationships. Mm -hmm. Can you name five sectors that will be immediately affected by this agreement? Five sectors, yes. I would think that uh, agriculture sector will certainly be um, beneficially impacted um, by the, the CETA. Uh, maritime transport, um, 
fisheries, um, automotive, uh, automotive sector, definitely, and um, maybe the chemical industry, mining and energy also. It is an intention of both sides to pave a road for SMEs uh, to take advantage in uh, trade. Uh, and uh, what are the key drivers for SMEs uh, to succeed in this agreement? Um, CETA is definitely very beneficial to SMEs because it's going to pave the way um, already for the companies who are already doing business uh, bilaterally um, and certainly open up and facilitate business for companies that are intending to or would like to do business. So 99% of the tariffs will be eliminated as the first day that the agreement enters into force. So that's, that's going to have a huge impact. Uh, for example, if you think in terms of fisheries, uh, some of the fish now they have an import uh, duty of 8% and goes up to 25%. So, you know, you eliminate that right off the bat. So that's going to be very beneficial. Um, and But just not only the, the trade barriers, the economic like, tariffs, the custom duties, but also the non-tariff uh, barriers, such as recognition of uh, the procedures and certificate of uh, for respect to um, sanitary measures and, and protection and hygiene and things like that. So a lot of cooperation will be done on that sense. So a lot of companies will reduce their costs because the procedures will be less. Um, labor mo mobility will be increased and facilitated. So business in general will be facilitated for the SMEs on both sides and uh, that will certainly create bigger opportunities and create employment also. What changes will CETA bring in agri-food sector? It will be very beneficial for the agri agricultural sector, so quotas will be fixed, so Canadian companies will have a maximum amount of, um, of uh, products that will be able to uh, export into the EU, so the quotas have been fixed for beef, it's going to be 50,000 tonnes of beef, and for pork it's 80,000 tonnes, so for beef that represents 0.6% of the entire EU consumption, so it's not that much, um, but it's, it's going to be very beneficial also. Um, for competition and uh, open up the markets and uh, so there's yeah beef there's pork um, and on the other side in the other uh, direction so um, towards Canada uh, they've agreed on 18,000 tons of cheese that will be able to be exported which is uh, I think a compensation for the beef and the pork that will be able to be exported towards Europe.